So dual booting Steam OS using Bazite and also Windows is mind blowing. As even though I was very skeptical going into this, I've come to realize that we really do get the best of both worlds. With Steam OS, our Switch games are much smoother, our game library is much more customizable and looks so much better. And also most importantly, we get true sleep and wake functionality. And we get the best of Windows too, such as being able to play games from third-party launchers, the ability to play anti-cheat games, and also being able to download and play natively Game Pass games. Switching between them both is so easy too, as in SteamOS we simply restart while pressing the volume down button to enter the BIOS and launching Windows from there. And in Windows we just simply restart to get back into SteamOS. Here are the 9 easy steps to do this, which of course works for all Windows PC gaming handhelds. Plus I'll share how there's a big benefit to using an SD card with this dual boot setup too. So let's start with the three optional and three essential things that we need to do this. And I'll leave links to all these in the description. These three optional ones are only if we want to upgrade the SSD, which we don't have to do. We absolutely can do this on the internal one terabyte that ships with the Ally X, but I really do recommend upgrading the SSD to something like this crucial P3 Plus M.2 2280 SSD. And I got the four terabyte one. That'll give us a whopping two terabytes of Windows and also two terabytes of Steam OS. And remember, if we're doing this on the original Ally, then this needs a different type of SSD called 20. 230. We also need a guitar pick or something similar to help us separate the Ally case, preferably a thicker guitar pick and also a small screwdriver to unscrew the Ally case and also the SSD itself which I believe they call a Phillips size zero and I ended up using an electric drill which made it much easier. The three essential things that we need are to install Bazite itself. So a USB flash drive with a minimum of 10 gigabytes. I only have here a USB A type one, so I'll plug this into a dock as obviously the Ally X is USB C. And we just need a wired keyboard and mouse. I'm gonna use these wireless Apple ones and plug in a wire. So step one is completely optional and that is to upgrade our internal SSD storage. I almost got one with a heatsink, but my research showed that these really aren't needed. And I almost got a faster and more expensive one like the 7300 speed one. But again, my research showed that something like this crucial P3 plus one I ended up getting really is perfectly fast enough. So just get whichever your budget allows. And the beauty of it all is that we only need to do this dual setup once. Then we can just do what our awesome viewer Black Magic does, which is before even turning future RG allies we buy on in the future, we simply put in this upgraded SSD. Okay, so just before we install, let's head into Windows settings, then privacy and security, then device encryption, and we need to toggle this to off to avoid any potential issues and conflicts. A tip is that while we're waiting for stuff like this throughout the whole setup process, is to have a film or TV show handy in the background to avoid boredom. When it's completed, which for me took around 30 minutes, let's shut down our ally. Remembering to unplug and remove an SD card if we have one inside. I'm going to rest my Ally X on the two cardboard stands that came with it and also a cloth. Next, let's remove all six screws from around the Ally X with the middle bottom one not actually coming out. And then we get something like a guitar pick to carefully go around all of the sides to gently separate the top and bottom of the case, which can be a little bit finicky. So just take our time with this. As we pull them apart, there is a little ribbon. So let's be gentle with this. To be super safe, let's move the battery by using our pick to slide downwards the silver bracket and then gently use our screwdriver underneath the battery to pop it out, super easy. Now let's take out our old SSD by unscrewing this one screw, gently ease this out. Let's take our brand new SSD and put this ready to go in. Store our old SSD safely in the packaging to put back into the Ally X if we ever sell it in the future and gently place our new SSD with the logo facing up. Screw it back in, push our black battery connector into place, push the silver lock connector back into place and we're done, yes. Now let's carefully place our casing back together and again we'll hear some clicks which is fine. Screw all six screws back into place and this really is so easy to do here. It only takes a minute, especially if you have an electric screwdriver like me. Double check that all sides are fully sealed and that's it. For step two, let's reinstall Windows. Again, we only need to do this if we've just upgraded our SSD. So let's plug in our Ally, 
wait until the orange light pops up and this is because there's a sensor in the Ally that very cleverly recognizes when we've gone inside the device. So after a few minutes, we're into the BIOS. Press the Y button to bring up the advanced section. On the D-pad, scroll across one to the Asus Cloud Recovery option. Press A and we simply go through all the steps to reinstall Windows and also the RG software like drivers and Armor Crate. We don't need the wide keyboard for this, we can just use the touch screen for all of the prompts. It may take a while to download depending on our internet speeds and while it mostly does everything itself, we do need to keep an eye on it for some prompts. Especially here when it asks us do we want to back up our files, so let's press no as there are no files to back up then yes, start the process. So as I say, it may take a while to have that film or TV show on in the background ready. Or just do what I did, which was cook some fajita boats. And hey, let us know what your favorite food is in the comments. So it took me about an hour to do this and I have a 500 megabits per second broadband speed. And here it is just setting up the ally like when we first unboxed by setting up our country, keyboard type, Wi-Fi, naming our device, fingerprint, and so on. A quick tip about the fingerprint as I do get asked by you great viewers in that it doesn't seem too accurate, which is to make sure we register our fingerprint placed at all different angles and this should help. So after all this setting up and updates will be in the desktop. Let's quickly head into this PC section and look at that. If you've just installed the four terabyte SSD like me, then we'll have a ton of space available. For step three, let's now set up dual booting with Bazite. If you haven't upgraded your SSD like me, then you'll start here. And first let's head into settings, into privacy and security, in device encryption, and, and let's turn this to off, again to avoid potential conflicts and issues. And it only took me about 10 minutes to do this. Let's now plug in our mouse and keyboard. I'm just gonna swap between the two to make life a little simpler for us as we partition our hard drive ready for Bazite. Let's click on the magnifying glass at the bottom, type in disk management and this opens up a windows program and right here we can see our c drive which is our main storage and what we're going to split in half let's right click on this click on the shrink volume option and here we select our sizes with our total available at the top which in my case is just over 3.8 terabytes I'm going to type in here two terabytes, which is obviously two zero 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 zero. So that's six zeros in total to be my Bazite partition with Steam OS on. Let's press shrink. It only takes 10 seconds with us having almost no files on. And here we can see our C drive with over 1.7 terabytes for Windows for all of our Game Pass games, etc. And over 1.9 terabytes for Steam OS. Two super quick final things before we install Bazite. The first is to go into Army Crate and install any updates. Like when we first load it up, we get this. Then head to settings, then update center, and make sure we're fully up to date. Again, to avoid any issues, and this will require a restart. And the second is to go into the My Aces app, update all here too, and I'd also recommend in registering our ally if we haven't already done so. And now we are ready to install Linux using Bazite. So now we've split our hard drive in half and we're fully up to date. For step four, let's install Bazite. So on our ally, let's open up our favorite web browser, which in my case is Brave. Head to bazite.gg, link in the description, which is the official Bazite webpage. From here, let's click on the download Bazite button on the top right. In this left section, select our handheld, which in our case is the Ally X. In the desktop environment, let's select KDE for Steam OS. Click on download. I'm gonna save it into my downloads folder. Here is the official documentation if we ever need it. So after it downloaded, it's just over nine gigabytes in size, and it took about 10 minutes for me on my 500 megabits per second Wi-Fi. Next, we need to flash this image onto our USB drive. So again, on our Allies browser, go to etcher.belina.io, link in the description, as this flash program is called Belina Etcher. Man, who comes up with these random names, by the way? Let's click on the green download button, select the Windows version, and again, into our downloads folder. Let's click on the Belina Etcher file to install. It takes about 30 seconds. Let's now plug in our USB flash drive. Click on the flash from file button. Go to downloads to select our nine gigabyte Bazite file. Click select location. Tick our USB flash drive and press select. Then press the all important blue flash button. We'll get this warning message saying all of our files will be erased. So if we're happy with this and let's click the yes, I'm sure button. 
and this took about 25 minutes for me and it depends on how fast our USB flash drive is. Now we want to head into the BIOS, so hold down the volume down button at all times, do not let go, click on the power button, click on restart, remember to hold that volume down button and after about a minute we'll be in the BIOS. We need to tell Windows to boot Linux before booting Windows to install Bazite. So to do this in the top right boot priority section, we simply drag our USB stick to the top, press the select button, then press OK. Next to these tiny options on the top left, we need to select install Bazite. Now at the time of recording, we can't use the D-pad or thumbstick to select this, so we do need our wired keyboard at this point in case you haven't plugged it in yet. So press up on the keyboard to select install Bazite. We get lots of tiny writing, then this welcome to Bazite screen. So let's select our language, then click continue. There are two things we need to do here. First, tap the installation destination. Our new partition should already be in here, so let's tap this. Then tap done on the top left. Then click on user creation, and it is crucial we create a user and a password. This will be something called our pseudo password in Linux later on. So make sure you use a password that is something that you'll easily remember. Click done on the top left. Click begin installation on the bottom right. And again, this may take about 15 to 20 minutes. Next is this blue screen with options. Using our wide keyboard, select the second option, which is enroll mock, which is a machine owner key. Then press enter. Then scroll down to continue and press enter. Then scroll down to yes and press enter. And for this password, type in universal blue. This is the amazing team that run Bazite. Type this with no spaces and no capital letters. And we can't see this as we type, which is a little disconcerting. So take your time and then press enter. Now just select reboot and press enter. And this is the only time that we need to ever do this, thankfully. For step five, we now need to set up Bazite. And we're here in the Linux desktop, which will be very familiar to you if you've ever used a Steam Deck. We can now unplug our USB flash drive as we won't need that ever again, yes. Then first, let's press the Wi-Fi button on the bottom right and connect to our home Wi-Fi. Next is KDE wallet message pops up to store our sensitive info. I would recommend this, so just select a classic Blowfish encrypted file, and I just use my easy to remember password I used before. Now let's change the display scale by clicking this bottom left menu button, then settings, then system settings, scroll to display and monitor, you choose your preferred percentage, but I'll select 150%. Click apply. And yes, that's much better. Let's finish setting up Bazite by clicking next. I'd recommend also setting an amazing app called Deculoader and also Emidec, which is incredible for emulation to you on. Then click install. If we're installing Deculoader, it'll ask us for our pseudo password, which is the same one we set up on this page when we created our user and password for Bazite. Click next. I'm not going to install any of these, so let's leave all of them unchecked and press install button. This screen doesn't do anything, so press next. Click done, and we're all good. One final thing before we head into game mode, which is that the Bazaar team recommend we log into our Steam account first. This glitched out for me as it's been a while, so I closed it. Press the Steam button at the bottom, entered my login details, and we're now in Steam. So we can press the menu button, click restart, then restart now and it should take about five to ten minutes this first time we'll come to this screen our thumbsticks and buttons work here so scroll down to our language then select our time zone select our wi-fi this will take another five or so minutes we need to sign into steam one final time we're in our welcome to steam deck page and this is it we are fully set up and welcome to steam os the command center button brings up the menu and the Armour Crate button brings up our quick settings menu. For step six, let's get to know parts of Bazite called Handheld Daemon, which are really awesome extra settings. To do this, just click the Armour Crate button twice. Here we can change the TDP power settings like in Windows. We can change the RGB thumbsticks. And pressing this wire button at the top brings up the full menu. Again, here's TDP, and I recommend enabling this change TDP with view and Y. So purple is 17 watt performance, blue is 25 watt turbo, white is manual, 
and red is 13 watt silent. There's RGB and I like the solid but I'm going to turn it up to 100% as I personally love the RGB around the thumbsticks. There's control options like the Nintendo mode, there's shortcuts we can play around with and finally settings. So we're in our final 3 steps now and if you got this far then you're doing amazing. So for step 7, let's download games and downloading our Steam games in SteamOS is so easy. Just select one in our library then click install and if we press the command center button, go to settings, go all the way down to storage and here we can see how much space we have which in my case is a whopping 1.8 terabytes, crazy! Remember that SteamOS is slightly different to Windows in that our shaders load beforehand so there can be a little wait whereas in Windows it loads shaders during the game so don't worry if games take a little while to load up initially. Let's download some Game Pass games on Windows so let's head there by clicking the command center button, scroll to power, hold the volume down button and restart. In the BIOS menu we simply press the command center button, select Windows, and after a moment we're in, so head to Armory Crate, to Game Platforms, we download our games from our launches here, so I'll select the Xbox app. It glitched out on me a bit, so I clicked the Review Now button quickly, then pressed Update. Here we can scroll through Game Pass games and install to our C drive. A little tip by the way, when downloading games is head to Armory Crate, then Settings, then Performance, then Eco Assist, and turn this keep this machine running to on so the display goes to black when plugged in so our downloads don't stop halfway through unexpectedly. The step 8 let's talk storage. So games we just want for Windows like Game Pass games that we cannot play in SteamOS we can just download to the Windows C drive but one of the most amazing things about this setup is that we can share games using an SD card so let's pop this in. Let's set up Steam game sharing in Windows first by heading to Army Crate, Game Platforms, then Steam, it's deja vu this first time that we select our language, then time zone and then log in, press the B button, go to power, then exit big picture mode, then at the top Steam icon press that, then settings, then storage, click on the drop down arrow, select add drive and here we add our SD card on the D drive. So if we go to view, then big picture mode, install the game, and it now asks us where, so we can now share most games between Windows and Steam OS on an SD card. So let's head back into Steam OS by simply restarting, head to settings, go to storage, and our SD card now shows up here. And for the final step 9 is to simply have fun trying all of this stuff out. And I'll give you some directions with links to the following in the description. For SteamOS, check out my brand new Switch setup guide, my Chiaki setup guide to remote play our PS5 console, my PS Play setup guide which is also fantastic for PS5 remote play, my 7 essential Deculoader plugin guide to customise game artwork and much more, and also my Emmy Deck setup guide to play all of our amazing retro games. On the Windows side, check out my 14 essential steps to optimise Windows guide to help us get the very most when playing our Game Pass, Anti-Cheat and games that require third party launches like EA Play when using FC24. Congratulations! You are now fully set up to dual boot Steam OS with Bazite and also Windows. Hit like and drop a comment if this helped you, which will enable the YouTube algorithm to spread out to many, many more in our amazing PC handheld gaming community. Also subscribe and enable notifications if you're new here too. To stay fully up to date with all of these tutorials, including a Bazite top tips vid coming very soon. And if you've had Bazite dual boots for a while, I'd love to hear how you're finding it, so share any tips below too. And as a thank you for watching this far, I'd love to share this awesome quote. Things are going to work out for you. Everything you are stressing about won't even matter soon. Long way to change is coming your way. Let go of the old and embrace this new energy. If you're going through a really tough situation, whether at home, at work or with a friend, family or colleague, hold on in there, you've got this. Don't stress because great things are coming your way if you don't quit or give up. So stay encouraged today guys. I really hope you enjoyed this vid. It took two weeks to make so I really do hope many of you find this super useful. And if you want to play our Switch games on Steam OS then click the top right or the bottom right for the Windows optimization guide. I appreciate every single one of you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.